Hello, my name is John Holmes. I'm CEO and co-founder of Microsoft and Diagnostics. In this series of presentations, I'm going to explain how VivaSight OCT can be used to make many useful skin measurements. In this first presentation, I'm going to focus especially on making measurements of the epidermis. First, I'll take an overview of the VivaSight OCT technology. Then I'll take a closer look at how the epidermis appears in OCT images and move on to how VivaSight and the VivaTool software upgrade can be used to extract useful measurements of the epidermis. And I'll finish up by taking a look at some actual example scans and examples of studies with these tools. Now in the middle here you can see the VivaSight OCT scanner. It comes with a handheld probe and a high resolution monitor for reviewing the the images and data. And to the right, you can see here that I'm imaging, scanning this patient's subject uh, skin. So it, there's no preparation required. You just put the probe into contact with the skin, uh, press a button on the probe, and it will capture an image in uh, 15 to 20 seconds. So how does optical coherence tomography or OCT for short, actually work. It's like a, a sort of analog of ultrasound, but instead of using sound, it uses light to scan into the tissue and produce the image, but with a much, much higher resolution. So the laser beam sweeps across a six millimeter by six millimeter patch of skin, capturing scans into the skin as it goes like so, to a depth of about one millimeter. So what we end up with after performing that scan is, is a, what we call a stack of images, as shown here. It's a three-dimensional image stack. We can look at it from any direction. Importantly, we can calculate many things from, these, uh, from this 3D stack, which can be of, of interest to, to dermatologists and skin research scientists. So how does VivaSight OCT image the epidermis in particular? So VivaSight OCT sees it as a slightly darker layer of tissue. Uh, we can see it here on this image of normal skin. Uh, and you, I think you can clearly see there's a distinct band of darker tissue above the dermis. And that corresponds to what is seen in histology, an epidermal layer above normal, above the dermis layer. The stratum corneum, which is extremely thin, is visible, visible only as a very bright top layer. And on uh, the palm skin, uh, it's a slightly different story because the stratum corneum is considerably thicker, as we can see here. And the epidermis is just below it and the dermis is below that. And lesional skin may look quite different again. So these are a couple of images of hypertrophic burn scars, and I'm very grateful to uh, Dr. Jill Weibel for these images of her, of her patients. And here we can see that the epidermis is actually brighter. So the tissue um, in, epi in scar tissue, the epidermis is, is different, um, and it is actually brighter than the uh, dermis image in the OCT image. And in this lower image, it's quite difficult to see the boundary between the, the epidermis and the, and the dermis. So how do we use VivaSight to actually measure the epidermis? First of all, it's fairly easy to eyeball where the epidermis is. I think you can see this is a screenshot of uh, what you see on the VivaSight after capturing some, an image of some normal skin. And I think you can see the, the epidermal layer. And it's easy to click and drag that so green line up to the boundary and then read off the thickness of the epidermis. In this case, uh, 0.09 millimeters, which is uh, 90 microns. However, for more automatic or automated measurements of the skin, 
uh, we have the v Vivo Tools Skin Analysis software, which is a software upgrade to the VivoSite system. And this software uh, automates the, uh, the analysis and extracts a number of useful parameters, uh, which I'm now going to explain. Um, so it measures three things of the epidermis. It measures the, the epidermal thickness in microns. That's the average thickness of the epidermis across the whole six millimeter by six millimeter uh, field of view. Next, we have the, the epidermal thickness variation. In other words, uh, how much the thickness of the epidermis varies from point to point across the whole six millimeter area, because it will vary uh, due to the lumps and bumps in, in, in the skin and the uh, reach ridges and so forth. Then there is the epidermal contrast, which is a measure of the ratio of the brightness of the epidermis to the brightness of the dermis in the OCT image and uh, that uh, that may relate to the uh, the, the skin um, tissue uh, so then finally we also have two measures that relate to the dermis uh, this is the surface reflectivity ratio which is the ratio of the top surface reflection to the brightness of the dermis and then we have the attenuation coefficient which is the rate of loss of the OCT signal with depth in, in the dermis. So those last two are measures of the dermis. And in this talk, I'm just going to concentrate on the first three. And I'm going to talk uh, about those in, in the next set of slides. Uh, I'll note in passing that the VivaTools skin analysis software is a research tool for investigational use. It's not uh, improved for clinical use. In other words, it's not approved for, for making treatment decisions. Whereas VivaSite and the VivaSite images can be used for, for making clinical decisions. So let's just review again um, the uh, measurement of skin with the, the it, Viva tools. We'll look at the whole uh, scan and extract the measurement of the uh, epidermal thickness across the whole stack. And it uses an algorithm which, which measures the, the depth intensity profile of every single point in the scan. And it looks for that very slightly darker layer, which you can see here. And that shows up in our intensity profile as we go from top to bottom. That's shown from left to right in this picture here, increasing depth. And you can see it's a darker, uh, darker area just here is where the epidermis is. And it, we can measure the boundary and we can do that in every single point in the entire scan and extract an average. So uh, for an, here's an example. Uh, this is the neck of a 45 year old male with quite rough skin. And you can see that the epidermal thickness is varying quite a lot from 40 microns over here to 160 microns over here. So the, the average epidermal thickness across the entire skin area is 73.4 microns, and the average variation across that whole area is 49 microns, 48.7 microns. Which So this is giving us a pretty good idea, not only the average thickness, but also how, how much that thickness is varying. Contrast that with this next example, uh, the temple of a 63 year old female and I think you can see straight away that her skin is a lot smoother but and you can also see that the, the DEJ is actually very very flat so we have a smaller we also see the her, her epidermis is, is thinner at just under 60 microns and her um, the epidermal thickness variation is 25.6 microns it's a lot lower and that's normal for, as you get older, the, the DEJ does tend to, to flatten out. You lose those free ridges and so forth. Uh, here's another example um, of lesional skin. Um, it's probably a, a nevus of some description. And uh, we can't see any DEJ and uh, VivaTOL's algorithm outputs epidermis not found. And there's a similar story on lesional skin. Uh, when the, the skin is actually brighter than the uh, dermis, 
so then Viva Tools will not detect it and the output's epidermis not found. Uh, the algorithm also doesn't work on other types of skin such as glabrous or plantar skin or areas where there's absent epidermis due to a disease condition. Um, so moving on to the epidermal contrast, here we're looking at the, uh, the ratio of the darkness or the, the intensity level of the epidermis uh, against the, the dermis. And it can be quite subtle. Uh, in this case, uh, we have twice it's measured a value of 2.2%, uh, whereas in the one on the right, we have an 11% contrast. Um, these changes are too small for the human eye to discern, uh, but the uh, Viva tools can detect these uh, differences and uh, can uh, calculate them for you. And, and it may show, may indicate some alterations or differences in the epidermis or dermis, dermis cellular content, which may, may, may be relevant to uh, the tracking of a particular condition. So moving on to some examples of some studies with these parameters. Here's an example analysis, uh, which we did, where we looked at 17 healthy females of a variety of ages between the age of 25 um, and, and, and 70, and plotted the epidermal thickness against age. And it's quite clear that there's a, a downward trend. Uh, the epidermis does thin with age uh, by about uh, just by about three, three to four microns per decade. Um, and uh, but it, it's you can see that that, that some skin um, that it's there's a, quite a bit of scatter. So uh, this person here has clearly managed to uh, get away with a, a thicker epidermis, even though she's she's nearly 70. Um, but nevertheless, a clear trend. And here is another example where what we did is we scanned the left and right cheeks of 34 healthy American males and females, again, over a variety of ages. Um, and we plotted this time, we plotted the thickness on the left side versus the right side. And uh, this line here indicates exactly the uh, halfway point. And I think you can see that there's more points down here than there are up here. So that's telling us that there's a bias uh, of, of thicker epidermis on the left side compared to the right side. And uh, that's shown by this trend line. And that may well be due to the so-called driver's side window effect, where Americans drive on the left, um, where they get more exposure to the sun, and that can result in a thicker, uh, maybe more roughened epidermis. We can only speculate, but I think that's uh, it's plausible. So this was just a couple of examples of the um, of where we've used the Viva tools to extract data from scans and plotted them to produce some results. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of potential for tracking the results of treatments um, and seeing the effects on the epidermis and other uh, these other parameters. And that's the end of my talk on using VivoSite OCT to make measurements of the epidermis. In my next talk, I'm going to talk about uh, making measurements of the dermis and the relation of these measurements to collagen content. So thank you very much for listening.